Welcome to Prophetic Rewind. I'm Don A. Clement Petrushka, and this is a Prophetic Rewind special I'm doing today with a very special guest, Prophet Roger Teal. And um, Roger is very special to our family because he prophesied over my mother and father when they were very young. I don't even remember if I was born yet. Um, and he told them where they would go, that they would end up living here in America, and even said that they would end up in California on the West Coast. And so he, many, many years ago, very accurately prophesied what would happen with my mother and father. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you today and have a little conversation with him uh, for this special Prophetic Rewind. So welcome, Prophet Thank you. Roger Teal. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time and joining me today. Thank you, Denise. And um, if you're anything like my dad, you probably don't even remember the prophecy, do you? Mm, no, not really. I can, uh, I can remember him in, in the meeting in South Africa. Uh, he was playing the, playing the organ, I believe it was, at Dr. Yes. Fred Roberts' church, yes. the Dome, yes. in Durban. Yeah, and I know that he was very uh, um, taken by the gift in my life at the time. Of course, I was only young then. But um, going back to what you've uh, remarked just a moment ago about the word of the Lord being given to your mom mm -hmm. and dad. Um, being here today, um, things are a lot different for me now from when it was when I first started out. Uh, I didn't really know anything. I, I'm not the son of a prophet or anything. I... Like Amos said, I was no prophet. It was the gift of God that began to develop in my life that uh, has caused me to become who I am. Having said that, this is all to do with the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God is God's will and God's purpose that is foreordained since whenever and when God has a, um, a purpose, he uses people. Yes. And I would be the least of thinking that I was to be a prophet. Um, I had a successful business with my dad. But when I had that encounter, when I was 24, 25 years old, that's what changed my life. Now, having said that, and I'm making a long answer here, um, that's what happened to your father. Yes. But what happened to your father was that he had an encounter yes. with the anointing that was on my life, and he wanted it. Now, it wasn't that I was going to give him what I have, because I will not today. I am I'm very um, quiet about telling people how or what I hear or what I know. Um, that's my advantage, to know, to speak what I know and testify what I've seen. Mm. But as for your, your father, he was hungry. He was hungry for the word of the Lord. He mm. wanted to be used by God. Yes. Um, extremely talented, yes. extremely talented. And as a result... God took that as he gave and obeyed and God used him significantly as we all know. Yes. And uh, by virtue of his um, gift, uh, it was very uh, public, Yes. very public, which is not usually the thing. It, well, I say in ministry, we have uh, what I term quite clearly and categorically Christ traffickers today. We have plenty that are going around that are not anointed and not called and they're in it for their own business and their own ends. Kim was not like that. No. Kim loved the Lord. And, yes. uh, but again, going back to the sovereignty, the reason that your father was a prophet because it was because he was sovereign, sovereignly chosen by God. Mm -hmm. Not by the church, not by the denomination. None of that whatsoever. And as for you and mum and the kids and everything else, well, you just tag along 
Well, God uses yeah. your dad. That's so right. So I thought I'd just tell you that yes. to start off with. That's very true. Yeah, that's very absolutely. True. Um, growing up, um, that's literally what we did. And I re will remember it more than some of my younger siblings. Okay. Uh, in the early years, we traveled from church to church to yeah. church to church. I remember that. And I witnessed some incredible and remarkable things uh, as a very young child. Um, uh, when he would prophesy, that was very in intriguing and, and uh, pretty incredible to see, especially when he would would prophesy over individual people and bless them. And you could see the authenticity of it mm. um, and how God used him to help this particular person. Um, but the thing that interested me the most was when he would speak about revelation he received from the Word. And so as a child, I would sit on the front row usually with my little journal. Um, I, I think I started doing it this at about nine or 10 years old. I'm a writer, is what I do. That's, uh, so I would sit and I would write. And that's the thing that intrigued me the most was what is this prophetic thing? What is prophecy? And it was very intriguing to me. And it's a subject that's still very intriguing to me. And um, I've learned a lot since my father's passing because I grew up and it was something that was just there that I was used to. So I, it, it didn't... That you were accustomed to. I was it. accustomed to it, exactly. Once he passed, I saw with new eyes, even during, during his illness, I had some very incredible encounters, visions, things that God showed me, uh, particular dates, uh, things that I couldn't describe. Uh, it was a very painful and difficult time for me because I loved my father. I was very close to him. We had a very good relationship. And um, it was very hard to say goodbye to him. But through the process of his illness, I started to watch and watch and watch, and I saw with new eyes. Um, there were certain things that God told me to do, and I went and did, and some of them I still don't understand. Planting the almond tree after reading about Jeremiah, um, seeing the branch of the well, almond tree. So, what does this mean, Danae? Well, what happened was I... I no, no, no. God showing you this? Yes. God speaking Jeremiah, to you? Jeremiah, he showed me Jeremiah. Yeah, God speaking to you? Yes. You, the reason I'm here today, though the audience doesn't know, but they'll know now, was that uh, I was told, I haven't been to California now for quite some time, not for any reason, but just haven't, uh, that in your prayer time, the Lord spoke my name. Yes. Well, uh, I've never, I can't remember you from being little or anything. We don't know each other. No, I didn't remember this you. This is what I want to say, Dene, and I'll say it right there. What you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're picking up, the purpose of that is because the anointing of God is on your life. And as a result of that, God's will and purpose will still continue. Your father is no longer here. And your endeavours to share the love, the words, the counsel, uh, all that you know of him with others is truly commendable. But that anointing that's on your life is the sovereign purpose of God, that God's word will be extended and spoken through your lips. Mm. Yes, Lord. That's why I'm here. It's you. You. And this is only in a measure. Your father saw things at times close and at times at a distance. We do see things distantly. Mm. I'll share a little bit about how I do it. And that's so. 
But I found that when you need to know, you know. So where does that place you? It places you at a time in the days in which we live today where there is seriously a famine for a true word from the Lord. And people are indeed trafficking about. Can I get a word here and a word there from those who they perhaps and maybe are credible. Please understand I'm not uh, here to call names. No, sir. Prophecy is a gift, is uh, a spiritual gift. And the body of Christ is encouraged through the Epistle of Paul uh, to prophesy. And people do. And people hear from the Lord. They should. If the Holy Spirit is within you, you yes. should be hearing from the Lord uh, at a certain level. At a certain level. Yes. As far as I'm concerned. But a prophetic word, a word from God, it's not quoting something from Scripture or relating to some event and coming back after the, after the fact. It's the foreknowledge of God. A word of wisdom is to know the mind and the purposes of God. People think it's a word of wisdom to know what's a wise thing to do. Well, of course. Mm. Obviously, wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. With all you're getting, get wisdom. Yes. Take fast all of instruction. Keep her. Let her not go. She is thy life. We can quote the scripture. Yeah. But the evidence, the manifestation, the manifestation, has to come by the Holy Ghost. And so, I know I'd jump in there. But Danae, so, what next? Who knows? I don't know. Who yet. knows? But again, who knows? The prophets, prophetess, have the foreknowledge of God's immediate past and present. That will help you. Have you ever been in a situation where something sounded so genuine and so right and you thought, is this okay? I don't know. Well, when you know past, present and future, yes. you can find yes. quickly the yes. balance and know whether it is or whether it isn't. Yes. Your schooling, reading scripture, saying your prayers, help to give you a foundation. But when it's time for an immediate word, will it draw from that knowledge of your past? Perhaps a little. Perhaps a little. Will it draw from what you've heard, what somebody told you? Absolutely. But it's like problems. To every problem, there is a solution. Yes. God gives the prophetess the solution. So I rejoice to see you today, young lady. Thank you. Yeah. I know this is on the line, but so go ahead. Well, I can't hold back what I came here to do. I'm not here to do a, a show. No, no, not at all. Go, go, sister. Um, what would you want to ask? It's difficult for me because I feel um, insignificant and qualified. How about insecure? Insecure. You have a good husband? Yes. He loves you? Yes. I've got a great wife. She loves me too. My wife isn't preaching, prophesying, doing what wives do, and I know you do it too. Yeah. The washing and the ironing and yes. taking care of the kids. Yes. That's what my wife did while I was going around the world. That insecurity will not necessarily pass. Unless you know that your, his presence mm. is with you and there, you're nervous. I've been there many times, Danae. I've got to know that the Lord is there. I've got to feel the presence. I've got to be sure. 
what will I say? Fudge it? I fudged it. I don't mean in a disrespectful or a unholy way, but uh, I've got to know the presence of the Lord. Mm. And when I have the presence of the Lord, others know I have it too. That's another advantage. Mm. Our weapons are not carnal. Carrying the presence, yeah, yeah. We talked a little earlier before when I had my tea there about detachment. The detachment is not that you're better or mm. anything like that, obviously not. Mm. The reason for the detachment is that you keep your spirit uncluttered. When people talk and chatter and this, that and the other, that's traffic. It is traffic. You've got to process it. You've got to... Yes. Keep yourself from that, girl. Keep yourself from that. Okay. You probably observed I seemed yes. to be a little abrupt when I came in. Hello, 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 hello. I'm here. This is serious business, isn't it? Very serious. You're looking to the house of destiny. Where are we going? What next? What's happening? Mm. We'll come to that later. So that's been part of the journey too. Yeah. Is because of suddenly losing my father, we were put into a position where Absolutely. here we have this ministry, and um, I think the most important thing. This is something I spoke to my mother about. Is the people, and uh, that's very important to me. Because that's what I was saying is I, I, there's names that I remember from 20 something years ago when I used to work in the office and type the names yeah, into the yeah, computer. Yeah. Those people, I still see their names and that's important. And uh, there's a responsibility with that. And um, so we as a family, especially my mother and I, and a team, the team of people here, um, have had to find our way in what is the right thing to do uh, with the foundation that was laid here, with the land that was plowed. Um, um, the spirit of truth, you know. yes, the spirit of truth that dwells within all those that are truly born again is that which is, that which is an expression of the very nature of God, is truth. Yes. And so, coming here in the car, flying in on the plane, of course, my, I have rehearsed, not these words, because I never, um, but what it's, what's it all about? Where am I going? What, what am I going to tell these people? What, what, what are they doing? That which has been foreordained for you, for you, primarily you, not mom, not your brothers, not your sisters, not the team, you. The prophetic mantle that rests upon a life brings about an individuality that is totally, absolutely, unequivocally unique. Yeah. There is nobody like me. Now we know there's nobody like you, there's nobody like him. We know that. But in this uniqueness of the spirit choice, there are attributes that are godly. You have your attributes. You take after dad a little bit. Take after mom a little bit. You've learned characteristics and uh, similitudes of things uh, growing up. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you are your you, you. But if you begin to acquire the attributes of true godliness, that's when you become a woman of God, mm. a man of God. Not by title or name, yeah. but because of these attributes that you carry. So, like what, Rog? The way you think. Very I don't good. think like other people think. Kim didn't think like no. other people think. Kim doesn't think like Rod thought. Right. I didn't think like Kim thought. Why didn't he? 
because of the attributes of godliness. God has to work in the mindset to cause the individual that he has chosen to think as God would think. Mm. Now yeah. we're not talking about the word says this and the yes, word yes, yes. says that and you're this and you're that and yes. you're the other like we hear some and in consideration and respect I do thank God that I am the righteousness of God in Christ and I'm not a sinner anymore and I'm a king's kid and I'm a, what else am I supposed to be? Yeah, right. But in reality I am me and you are you. Yes. But in that which we are speaking of right now, those attributes are there and can now begin to function by virtue of the fact that Kim Clement is not here. He is not here. There are those that have sought at times, perhaps not with your father, but those that were great that God used to be symbolized and glorified and you know, this kind of thing. No, 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 no. Your father has seen the glory and is now part of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not here to glorify him. Right. For he was a man that was favored. For when God chooses a man, he gets favor. But the purpose of God is not restricted to human flesh or to male or female. And so who is this girl? Oh, it's Kim Clement's daughter. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Don't worry about it. Don't seek a name. You're not, of course. You already got one. Their reflections of you may be drawn from their carnal minds for there are so many with a carnal mind. I pray and shall do for you that they will see in you that which is of the Spirit that will cause them to know even as the women of old of Scripture that we read of we were coming along in the car and uh, my dear friend Neville MacDonald was talking about uh, a particular building somewhere in L.A. where there were some old black and white photographs. And uh, it was remarked that they were of Amy Simple McPherson, uh, yeah. the great woman of God. Think of that woman, how she was used to affect the lives of thousands I have affected the lives of, maybe not thousands, well, I don't know, I should think thousands, possibly, but now. What is the effect that you will have on those that you have yet to meet? What is the effect of those that will encounter the word that they are so longing to hear? To those that don't even maybe know your name, I see many in grave clothes. I see many in prisons that abound. I see multitudes with their eyes blinded. So where do you get that from? Well, it's in Isaiah and it was spoken of of Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. Would that anointing be on my life? Uh, yes, oh, I'll grasp it. Would it be on yours? Sure. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to open the prisons to them that are bound, right. to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. So to whom are you sent? To those. And as you go with this, 
the world will know your name and who you are and what you do. But most of all, who you represent. This is servant. Him. Because that's what you are if you're a prophet or if you're called, you're a servant. So what are you? A servant. A servant? So am I. What else? I don't know. You don't know? Are you listening to me? The Spirit of the Lord is on you. You've been anointed. You don't have your dad's mantle. You have the mantle that the Lord has placed on your life. He's chosen you to continue the word that came through this ministry. This ministry has affected the world. You're a voice. Your tongue will be loosed. Your spirit will come from within. It's a water that wells up and comes forth. The revelation knowledge will come. Yes. Surely as the Lord has spoken to thee this day, would he bring thee to a place to twist thine arm, to force thee to be in the place that he would desire thee to be? For yea, saith the Lord, that which I purposed in thee was before thou wast formed. Yes. For surely, saith the Lord, thou hast heard the word through thy father, but the words that come through thy lips shall be words of judgment. For you will not speak peaceably. You will not give them a charm. You will not be there and dance and sing. For the words that come forth from thy mouth shall come right as an axe that lays itself at the root of the tree. Yes. For the true word pierces even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. Is that which thou wouldst desire? It is my desire for thee. Therefore thou shalt separate thyself for a while. For I have a purpose regarding this which you are endeavouring to do. You are in a rush, and I will not yes. rush you. I will stop you. Yes. I will shut you down. I will stop you right now. There are those that have come in to grab. There are those that have come in to take. I will bring them out. Saith the Lord, wait, wait, yes. wait, wait, wait. Yes. And as you wait, you will know. Yes. Now I understand. When are we going now? Is that it? That's it. That's it. God bless you.